With just a few minutes of your time, I'm going to show you how to go from a boring webcam like this to a super professional one like this. It is engaging and I guarantee you people will ask you about it. Streamers have been utilizing this effect for years, but I feel like I put my own little bit of a twist on it. I'm not using a green screen, which allows me to use the real background in the background of this scene, making transitions from a talking head spot like this when I'm talking to chat and I'm engaging to then when I'm switching to my gameplay scene, I can seamlessly do that and still use that same background and get this cool effect, which is super engaging. Believe me, because people ask me all the time about it. Some basic information before we get started. I am using OBS as my broadcasting software, which allows for plugins. I'm going to be using two different plugins for this video. The first one being Stroke Glow Shadow and the second one being Source Clone. Both of these will be listed in the description below for easy install. The last app we're going to be using is NVIDIA Background Removal. You do need an NVIDIA graphics card for this. I'm sure there's some workarounds with other plugins for OBS, but I wanted to put that workload on my graphics card instead of the rest of my computer. So it was the best option for me. And please don't get intimidated. I promise you this is a lot simpler than you think. I'm going to be walking you through it step by step so you can utilize this effect for your stream to take it to the next level. The first thing I wanted to do was to create a new scene. So I named it 3D face cam area, and then I added two different sources, just kind of give us a base. The first thing I did was add our gaming PC. So pretend there's gameplay behind here. And I also added my face cam. I made it really big in the middle of the screen because I'm going to do everything on a larger scale because then we're going to put everything into a folder later in OBS and be able to move it all around as one instead of having to move all the individual pieces around and all the different layers to make this effect happen. The next source we're going to be adding is actually the webcam border. Um, I already have this installed into a different scene, so I'm just going to go into an add existing, but you can browse your um, computer and add this from wherever it's located. Okay, so it's actually the border thin. Um, this is where we're going to really start sizing um, how our face cam is going to be fitting in here. I know it's crossing my head because that's the effect that I'm giving. I want it to kind of give me a little bit of wiggle room with my elbows if my hands come out of the frame a little bit um, to kind of really sell that effect. I also went with the white color border because I really think it makes the drop shadows that I'm adding really pop because that's going to be in like a dark gray, dark black. So I really think that's going to be an added plus for this one. So we're going to add that border. We're going to actually line it up perfectly with the bottom of that webcam. Because again, eventually we're going to be layering another webcam on top of this one with the background removal. So I feel like this is a great start to where we're, I feel like I'm in frame when I'm gaming and I'm sitting here normally. Also, my head cuts off. So this is going to be all outside of the frame in the later on effect. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is actually going to click on the face cam area. You're going to hold alt on your keyboard and you're going to drag these in to sit just behind the face cam border, including your forehead. Your so your forehead is gone now. So this is what you're going to see when you're looking at this right now. It looks like I'm coming out from behind this bottom bar here and now I'm cut off everywhere else. Now here is when the fun stuff happens. The next source we're going to add is the source clone. This is one of the plugins that we installed earlier. You click this plus button in the source area and just click source clone. Um, we're going to create a new one. Let's label it uh, face cam background removed and click OK. Next thing you know, under this clone category, we're going to hit this little button here and we're going to find my face cam. I named mine Sony ZVE10 because that's the camera I'm using. So once we find that, we click it. Let's make it a little smaller because we're covering all the work we just did prior. For you guys that don't understand why we need this source clone, if you make any changes to your original camera, right? My original Sony ZV-10. But if you made any filters, you added, you know, color correction, you made it brighter, wherever you put that camera anywhere else in any other scenes, those effects will carry over. But by creating a clone of this face cam, I can now make changes to the clone and it will not take effect on the image underneath it, the original. So uh, what I'm going to do here to make my life a little bit easier is I'm going to go back to the original Sony ZV-E10 and we're going to click Alt. We're going to bring these edges back out because we're going to line these up. OK, so let's do that. Let's line these up perfect something like that um, i know i centered this earlier so i'm going to click transform and center to screen so then now we're going to the face cam background removed okay we're going to right click it and click filters this is where we're going to add another one of those things that we installed prior this time the nvidia background removal so we're going to the effect filter section we're going to click the plus button and click nvidia background removal and click ok 
So this is going to do a pretty good job by itself. But as you can see here, very lightly, you can see through my head and hair and see the, the edge of the border, right? So we're actually going to mess with this little bar right here until you don't see through anymore. I think we're good with uh, 0.95. So once you make sure you can't see through yourself at all to see through into the background, you're good to go. You press close. Um, so this is kind of what the effect would be like if you just did that. Now all you have to do is now bring these back area back down behind the border. So you click Alt on when you're clicked onto your back camera and drag these bad boys in. So now you can see the background removal really working on my hair. But the cool part is if it, the background removal ha sometimes has a couple little issues and little like misses, it'll miss some of my hair. But if it you know misses some of your fingers when you're in the camera view, you still have your real fingers behind here because if I remove the front camera, you still have your real camera behind here. So it kind of gives you a little fail safe of anything in this border, but anything on the exterior. So now if I reactivate this, it'll give you that full effect like I'm coming out towards you. Um, and now to really sell it, I can add a shadow on the background removal image of my clone. But we go back into the filter section of this same area, the effect filter. Now we're going to click shadow. We're going to click OK. And now we can change a couple things. I usually go to dual here. Um, I can make the size a little bit bigger, maybe like 25 pixels. Um, and we go from there. I think the distance, the only thing we have to make sure is that the angle is correct. So if the angle was pointing down like the sun was above us and was casting a shadow below, you would see that on that bottom border of our webcam border. And we don't want that. So we want to make sure the angle by dragging this left and right, you can kind of see the shadow like working its way around me. I want it opposite of my key light. So my key lights to my right here. Um, the light is coming here, so I'm casting a shadow this direction. So you still want to, you know, cast the shadow the correct direction. Um, once you get all these settings pretty much set up, you can click close. And now I feel like it's really selling that I'm in front of this border, right? It's casting a shadow on this top border here. I'm still like kind of coming out towards you. Um, again, there might be a little imperfection on the stuff like out here with your fingers if you're like starting to do stuff like this. But for me, it's been looking pretty good. As long as you stay inside this red border here, it won't cut off your elbows. You can really get that full effect. So if you talk with your hands a lot, maybe you're Italian, you're just kind of, hey, you know, one of these, it works out great. So then now when I'm casually gaming, sitting here, you still have the my head popping out of the area, which is still eye catching. But if I want to bring my hands up and out and towards you, if I want to bring my right one and it focuses on that, it still looks like I'm coming towards you, which is really cool. Um, now you could hypothetically put this in like the section over here and you'd be good to go. But I want to take it one step further and I want to put a drop shadow behind the actual face cam border as well to kind of separate it from your gameplay. So the next source we're going to add is another image and this is going to be the drop shadow for the entire face cam. So we're going to go to image. We're going to create a new one. Let's name it face cam back shadow. I feel like that's simple enough. Let's create news. Let's browse my system. I think here face uh, webcam shadow. Boom. So then now uh, let's uh, click OK here. And now we see our background shadow just so we can fill the back end. Um, I probably could have made this graphic the exact size of the border, but I just wanted to make it super quick. And this is how I did it. So once it's here, we're going to hold shift on our keyboard and we're going to like manipulate the size a little bit. We're going to kind of pull it both directions until we're getting it to the correct width as well as the correct height. Um, this kind of takes a little bit of effort, but uh, again, there's probably easier ways of doing this, but this is just the easiest way for me. Use what I already have. Um, so we're gonna boom, we're almost there. And we're gonna slide this up just a tad. Okay, so we can see a little bit of uh, our border peeking through around all the sides. Now we're gonna drop this behind our face cam. Now that the shadow is placed behind the face cam, if I turn it on and off, you can slightly see the shadow peeking through the sides. Okay. So now with the hat, I can kind of help myself kind of separate my gameplay and my face cam area. It makes the borders pop a little bit more because they're white and make my face cam pop a little bit more. So now all that's left to do is add all of these different sources to one folder. So if you click the plus button one more time and you click group, so this is the folder. So if I do face cam two, because I already have one already created, of course, um, let's create that's going to drop here. You're going to now drag and drop all of these different things into the folder. 
So now everything's ordered correctly. They're all in a folder. We can actually minimize this, click the whole face cam, and change this to whatever size we want. We can move it on the left side, the right side, and now that it's in one group, we can make it as big as we want or as small as we want, and everything gets scaled at the same time. So I know the removal of the background isn't perfect, but I'm not using it on this scale. I'm using it as a small face cam next to my gameplay, and at this scale, I think it looks great. As a recap, we still get to use our live background. So if I'm doing a just chatting section and I utilize my whole screen, I can still then switch to a gameplay screen right after this and still have that, you know, removal of the background, the green screen look without a green screen. If you guys are interested in the border I used and the shadow that I used in the background of this webcam, I can link them in the description below in a Google Drive so you can download them. I know time is very valuable and I appreciate you guys being here and spending this much time watching the video and I thank you guys and I hope to see you in the next one.